Hello, you're live on the Archie Luxury and the Paul Pluto channels. Today, I've got a very special guest, and uh, this is Mr. Tim Bender. Tim Bender, uh, he's very kindly agreed to come on my channel. And what we are talking about today, I came across because I'm trying to do a book on amazing what stories. <clears throat> Everybody, I think, watches are an incredibly personal thing. Men can't really have terribly much jewelry, unless you're Greek, of course, then you can have. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. No offense to anyone <laughs> Greek there. You can have, you know, watches are something that all men of all classes, all professions, all whatever can share and enjoy. And today, our good friend Tim has an amazing story. This is an amazing story. And this involves <clears throat> a very special Omega. Uh, this, this is actually a, a story about a very special Omega, which is, um, uh, it's an Omega, which belonged to a, a decorated uh, American. This here, Tim, this is uh, the story of Lieutenant Colonel George Vinter. Tell me more. Yeah, that's correct. And thank you for having me on, Paul. Um, so my name is Tim Bender. Uh, I run Fog City Vintage. Um, and uh, I came across this watch uh, back in May uh, of this year. Um, totally, uh, it's, it's, it's an incredible piece as, as a collection. Um, you know, initially... Uh, a collector, a friend of mine, had posted this on Instagram. I saw it was a, a really cool uh, Omega. It was pictured with a stack of military documents, um, and it jumped out at me uh, near immediately. Uh, shot him a DM, asked him if it was for sale, and was politely told uh, <laughs> that it would probably never be. Uh, six weeks later, uh, goes goes by, and I get contacted. Uh, he had an opportunity to move on a piece that was um, also special, so we agreed on a price. Uh, I, I wired the funds and um, this watch showed up. Uh, when I got the piece, uh, I was completely blown away with what was included uh, as part of the collection. Um, so first and foremost, the watch is in outstanding condition. Uh, and the reason for that, I'll, I'll kind of jump into uh, a bit later. But, um, you know, upon opening this, this, this package, uh, it had uh, hand signed letters of condolence from President Richard Nixon, General Westmoreland, Crete and Abram, Senators, uh, the report of his casualty when um, this gentleman's plane went down in Vietnam uh, while doing a reconnaissance mission, uh, passports, uh, every, every bit of paperwork uh, associated with his military career for the most part was included. And how that, um, that all came to be is, um, so this gentleman was killed in action in Vietnam uh, in February of 1970. Uh, upon his death, all of his um, personal effects were sent back to his family in Maryland. Uh, and, and really forgotten about for the better part of 50 years. Um, so he had two daughters, um, both had passed uh, pretty early on, never married, never had children. Uh, the entire estate was left to, um, to a, a neighbor of, of his youngest daughter, Michaela, uh, and the entire estate was put up for auction as she um, you know, acquired uh, substantial medical bills towards the end of her life. Um, a collector had the, uh, you know, the, the foresight. He was, he was, in, he was interested in, in, in the watch, saw that there was another lot that was part of this local uh, estate sale. And uh, the other lot had some, some military documents. He was uh, hoping to find pictures of, of the gentleman wearing the watch, uh, ended up, you know, getting, getting the package and uh, then went on to, to sell it to the collector that I ultimately purchased it from. But uh, it, it's truly a national treasure. And I think to your, your point, Paul, I mean, it's, it's so much more than a watch. Um, this watch was likely purchased uh, while this gentleman uh, was on R&R. &R. Uh, the extracts from Omega detail a delivery date to Hong Kong uh, in May of 1969. So this watch would have been no more than, you know, six or seven months old uh, at the time of his death. And we know that um, he had two, uh, two watches uh, and, and this one definitely returned back to him, uh, back with him to Vietnam. Um, the first was an Angelus chronograph uh, with a broken band. So this, this watch was likely purchased as a replacement um, and could very well have been on his wrist uh, when, when his plane went down. Um, yes. So, uh, you know, upon getting this package, uh, again, completely blown away with uh, everything that was included. 
Uh, and I, and I just became absolutely fascinated with a story trying to put together the pieces of how this collection even came to be, you know, why no other family members, uh, had this in their possession. It was just such an important piece of Americana. Um, and, and, and through my research, I, you know, tracked down, um, you know, the, the attorney that handled the estate by the time she got involved, uh, again, the, 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 the daughter of, of, um, Lieutenant Colonel Fintner, uh, had, um, you know, gotten really sick by the time the attorney got involved. Um, she was really acting on, on her behalf. Uh, you know, she had no idea why I was calling all these years later. Uh, I was trying to get as much details uh, about this as possible. Um, was able to uncover, uh, you know, where some other important lots went, including his burial flag and, um, and, and medals. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to reacquire those for the collection. Um, but, you know, most importantly, I wanted to uh, find if there was anyone that would have interest in receiving copies of these documents back, given their importance. And um, through that, you know, I, I found that he had one last surviving uh, nephew, and he was completely blown away when I reached out to him. He was a young boy when his uncle died. He knew his, his uncle was doing something special in the military um, and, you know, was completely uh, floored when, when, he, when he learned and, and ultimately had a lot of his unanswered questions uh, answered. Um, so, you know, then taking a step back and, and looking at this gentleman's military career, clearly he was uh, someone of importance. Um, you know, President Nixon was not uh, hand, you know, hand inking signatures uh, on, on condolence letters for, for anyone. Uh, a part, part of the collection as well includes a uh, concealed carry permit, his passport, uh, and a chauffeur's license. He was in and out of Chile when, you know, we weren't really supposed to be involved there. Um, just very uh, interesting, uh, you know, uh, personal items that were included with his, uh, with his personal property as well, including audio recording equipment, camera equipment. Um, so, I mean, clearly he was doing some interesting things uh, and, and had a very uh, decorated military career. So, um, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's an amazing watch and an amazing collection uh, and, and really, you know, happy to come on and, and ultimately share the story because, uh, it, it might be one of the most complete uh, and detailed provenance pieces uh, to ever come to market. Uh, this watch will be going to auction uh, in, in, at Christie's in December uh, as part of their important watches, and it's, and it's featured uh, as an American icon, which is a, a, you know, a smaller subset of some of the watches that they'll be auctioning off. Um, and it's an, you know, it, side-by-side uh, property that was owned by you know, President George Bush and, um, and Ernest Hemingway. So... Uh, it's a great honor and, um, you know, happy to take the show wherever, wherever you feel is best, Paul. Sure. It's, it's, it's an incredible story because the, the Amiga 300 Seamaster is actually a very beautiful watch. I, I think I've actually owned a few Amiga 300s and uh, you, you're a vintage dealer yourself there. You, you, um, you, 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 you would have to agree with me. It's a very nice model. Oh, it's, um, it's, it's beautiful. I, I mean, in my, my personal opinion, I, I much prefer it over uh, a Speedmaster of the era. Um, the sword hands, uh, the you know, kind of big light bezel that, that it has. Um, it's, <clears throat> it's, it's a remarkable watch. It wears well. It's very uh, tool-like in function. And, um, you know, it's taken yeah. on a beautiful patina. The, the, the terrible story, of course, to this watch, the reason why it's in such good condition, I mean, for starters, this particular gentleman, he was a lieutenant colonel, which is pretty senior rank. That's, a, that's, that's above a major. Um, he, he would have been on good money, good money. And uh, he was, he was uh, unfortunately, um, he, he unfortunately, he was only 39 years old. I mean, I've seen photos of him. I've tried to do some research uh, from what you've sent me, and uh, he was a 39-year-old lieutenant colonel, a career officer. He joined the, the military uh, before he was 20. And yep. uh, the sad thing is, I mean, you look at his photos, he, he's, he seems like a – he looks like an average guy. He doesn't look like a pompous – like, when you say lieutenant colonel, you think, geez, this would be some very old guy – Yep. He obviously worked very, very hard to get that rank. Yep. Um, he looks like a – the sad thing is it basically his death destroyed his whole family. His daughter's never married. Yep. I mean, his wife – I mean, okay, she got a letter from President Nixon, but I'm sure she would have preferred her husband to come back. 
one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, and um, you know, it's 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 really sad because uh, you know I was able to also track down people that uh, that served with him. Um, you know, he was on his last tour. Uh, I think within months away from from going home and and, and returning back to the U.S. Uh, permanently. And again, uh, just wanted to go up and, and, and fly uh, one last mission. I guess he was trying to also earn um, some sort of uh, medal for, for you know, a certain amount of airtime and uh, decided to go up that, that day. Uh, the, the story was, you know, they were flying um, past their base, just doing some aerial reconnaissance uh, of the surrounding areas. And it's unknown if, uh, I guess they flew into a valley and, you know, there's a certain way you're supposed to approach and they didn't give themselves enough um, uh, space to ultimately, you know, pull out should there be anything, uh, any, any sort of catastrophic failure. But it's unknown yeah. if, uh, if, if the plane was, was shot down by, by ground fire, that there was some sort of mechanical error. But um, the plane ultimately went down. Uh, and, 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 yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's a very sad story. Um, and, you know, that's also kind of why, why this watch is in such remarkable condition as, as, as it did return back with his family uh, and, and from what I understand and talking to everyone that, um, that knew the family, you know, this definitely was a traumatizing, uh, life event for them. And, uh, it sounds like they really just kind of forgot all about him, packed this stuff away. And there wasn't really mention, uh, of, of him, um, in the family after that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's, 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 it's a very, very tragic story and it just shows you how, um, how nasty war can be it's um it's a very very sad story i mean he was 39 i mean i was born in 72 so this guy died before i was born he was 39 39 yeah. young young that's so young i i um and to be a lieutenant colonel my god that's uh, he had such promise i mean this guy really would have been you know he would have done well in 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 commerce had he gone into commerce after this? You know, it's such a, a leadership role. It's such a, a, a tragedy. And um, Absolutely. I wanted to ask you, with the watch itself there, um, you've got a. Did you get the box and papers for it, or is it just the watch, or what's the story there? Yeah, so when I received it, it was just uh, just the watch head only. Um, okay. I, I don't know what happened uh, with the box and papers. Uh, no, the watch course, was yeah. detailed on his uh, on his property report as being, uh, you know, one of the articles that was sent back to his family. Um, yes. But yeah, I mean, who who knows what's what's happened? But you know, based on condition, it, it, you know, the, the the story seems to align that this watch just sat away uh, for the last fifty years, and um, you know, again, it, it couldn't have been worn more than a handful of months prior to um, to you know ultimately going going back to the states. Have you worn the watch yourself? Uh, of course. I mean, that's that's uh, one of the perks of, of, of being a, a dealer and doing what I do is you, you definitely get to enjoy these watches. And it was a remarkable piece. Um, you know, it's 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 aged beautifully. Uh, the, the watch alone, I mean, you know, finding a comparable example is going to be very hard. Um, so, I mean, it's it's it, it's absolutely in pristine, pristine condition. Uh, I, I love the piece uh, while it was in my my custody. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just it's, it's a remarkable piece of history, a remarkable watch. Uh, the watch alone is is something special, and then you kind of put together the whole package. Um, that, so that's that NATO, with it was on a NATO when you got it. It was not. No, I've 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 added that NATO back. Okay, what was it on when you got it? It was just the head alone. So head alone. That's correct. I see. Okay. So it, um, it, it, it had been owned by a collector previously, um, and you know, I'm, I'm not 100% certain how, how that watch was received. Uh, there actually are some very interesting links uh, from when this, when this collection was first purchased. The gentleman went on uh, Rolex Forum and Omega Forum um, just to uh, you know, share his, 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 his recent purchase and try to get you know, feedback from, from uh, the community. Um, so those, those links can be found uh, if you were to search uh, for this watch, um, when it was purchased after, after that estate sale. So as, as far as, um, this, this watch goes, um, it's, it's kind of sad that it's, um, it's kind of sad. It didn't go to someone in his family. 
it's kind of sad that it's it's sort of um yeah what, what's kind of sad is that n nobody you know that it, it's not really um it's, it sounds like he had no family um again yeah. I mean, there there was no one to even leave uh the estate uh, to of, of his of his last surviving daughter, and it went to a neighbor that had been helping uh, her uh, towards the end of her life. And again, she uh, I guess acquired a lot of medical bills. By the time the attorney was involved, they just went to um, to sell the estate. Did you research where they were from? Were, were, were they wealthy, or, or what were they? No, middle, I mean, no. Mid middle class folks uh, living yes. in Har Hard to Grace, uh, Maryland, which is uh, a rural community outside uh, okay. of Baltimore. Um, okay. And he was stationed out of Aberdeen uh, Proving Grounds, I think was uh, was the name of the base, uh, which is in that in that yes. area. Um, and again, I mean, long long military career did a lot of interesting things, and that's ultimately where his family had settled down. Um, and yeah, you know, it, you know, it was very interesting too. Over the course of this research, I reached out to the historical society to see if they had any sort of information on this individual. Uh, the woman yeah. that ended up helping me uh, turned out to be a neighbor of his, and she just you know. Got got goosebumps as well. That what was he I, like as a guy? Was he a nice gentleman? How was he? What what, yeah. what what did you hear from from everyone that I spoke with? I mean, he was he was a very respected individual. Um, you know, the family lived a very quiet life. Uh, just yeah. given you know what we know about his military career, you know, he was doing some interesting things. So it would really align with um, you know him wanting some additional privacy about what he was doing. Uh, you know, during the Cold War and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I mean, he seemed, seemed to have been a great guy, uh, a family man, uh, loved his, loved his daughters and, um, you know, the, the, the family just, you know, kind of lived in a, in a, in a rural community and, and wanted their privacy and kept to themselves. Yes. Tell me this. Um, why don't you just keep this watch yourself? Why are you selling it? That's what I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I received this piece, I mean, it's just, it, it, it was clearly uh, very important. I've, I've not seen a collection like this. Um, and, and ultimately, the reason I chose to partner with Christie's in, in selling this is, uh, you know, they, they have the reach to get this into, you know, the collection of a museum. Uh, I, I am a watch dealer myself. I can't afford to keep every piece nor donate it. Sure. But, um, you know, I, I want to make sure that this gentleman's legacy is, is really preserved and gets into the right hands. And, you know, hopefully yep. it, it, it does wind up in a museum because you have to see these documents and this watch together to understand its importance. Uh, and, and it's crazy to think this gentleman's legacy was on the cusp of being completely forgotten about if it wasn't for an Instagram post. Um, and then the hours that I put into trying to research this, the, the background behind this individual. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely sad, but it's, it's, it's a remarkable piece of Americana. Yes. Yes. Have you had uh, much I interest in it? W what sort of uh, interest has it has it has it has it um, has it had there? Uh, we, we've we've been getting uh, a tremendous amount of, of interest. Again, this is one of the most detailed um, you know provenance type pieces uh, to ever come to market. Um, you know the, the the watch alone is in fantastic condition. Um, but you know, the, the, the collection as a whole is, is really something special. It goes far beyond just to watch far beyond, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, again, it's a time capsule. This, this represents everything about this individual's, uh, life and is, uh, is, is a remarkable piece of Americana. So tell me, did you get the watch serviced or what sort of restoration work have you done on it? So it looks like there was no restoration work that was done. Uh, when I had uh, acquired the watch, there was a receipt from LA Watchworks, and you know, uh, it, it was good that when this individual who initially purchased the watch in 2013 had asked the community, you know, what what should be done, they recommended that it um, go to somebody who really specializes in vintage uh, pieces. And no restoration was done; it was purely a movement service, uh, and it looked like a crown was re replaced just to to make sure that it was you know, appropriate for every day where the original crown is included. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, it remains in phenomenal shape, um, untouched, never polished. Uh, and, and the patina that the watch has taken on is, is absolutely gorgeous. Um, but yeah, I mean, l luckily it had not been, uh, you know, restored by somebody who uh, wasn't, you know, aware of how to properly care for something like what's, that. What's the Christie, Christie's estimate on this watch here? Uh, it's twelve to eighteen thousand is uh, is is what they've opened up the um, 
you know, the, that, 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 that's the initial estimate that I think we're going to market with. Okay, that's not much, really. Um, no, I mean, it's, it's when, when, when looking at this and kind of our, um, our, our thoughts when, when, you know, putting this watch out yeah. to market is you have to really. I, I must say, to be honest with you, I really, um, one thing that worries me as a collector is when you do depart this earth, what do you do with amazing pieces? And I, I, I got to be honest with you, um, I I tend to think that you're probably better off to um, auction it like you have there. If you gave it to a museum, the problem is you give anything away. Like I give my son something, he doesn't really appreciate it because he hasn't worked for it. He hadn't he hasn't bought it. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes you have to sell something to make people appreciate it. Nobody appreciates things that are free. <clears throat> you, yep. you know what I mean? Yep. And <clears throat> If you gave it to a museum, I don't think they would appreciate it. You know, this is I'm, I'm just being being very, very uh, fickle here. Yep. I think, look, Christie's has got amazing exposure. They, they, they wouldn't handle the piece unless it was amazing. Christie's themselves get hundreds of, you know, mediocre bits. And uh, unless it was an amazing piece, they, they really wouldn't be that um interested um i i think i think what you're doing is probably the best way to get it into a amazing collection really yeah absolutely i mean and this is um we we, we there's there's been a lot of pr that's gone into bringing this watch to where it is um again it's it's, it's a wonderful watch uh it's amazing that this collection is so intact but uh th this this gentleman's legacy was 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 going to be completely forgotten about if it wasn't for this instagram post and and me really becoming fascinated and, and trying to put all of the pieces of this puzzle together um and and, and really we're, we're we're trying to tell this gentleman's story and how important um you know pieces like this are and that really was uh, so the idea behind he was going wearing to the watch when he 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 died or n no it, it was we we have no way of knowing with certainty um okay. my, my assessment in uh looking over the personal property report which is included in this collection is yet an angelus chronograph with a yes. broken band um, yes. you know, just knowing what I know of, of gentlemen of this era, specifically, you know, military folks, they didn't have tremendous collections. They had their one watch. Uh, we do know that this watch was delivered to Hong Kong in May of 1969. It was likely purchased as a replacement, uh, for his Angelus chronograph. Um, and you know, was, it, what was interesting is, so I, I think I'd sent you um, links to some of the text messages uh, that I had with his with his nephew when I first had had you know tried to find out who this gentleman was. Um, it, it's a remarkable story. I definitely encourage um, any of your uh, your viewers to to go on my Instagram, which is at fogcityvintage.com. Um, you know, through the through the text exchange uh, that we that we had, and ultimately the phone calls. He he knew that there was a watch that uh, his his that George had purchased for his grandfather as well turned out to be the exact same Angelus. Um, but yeah, we, we, we do know as part of the personal property report that he had an Angelus chronograph and then this watch. Uh, if the Angelus chronograph uh, had a broken band, that's likely why this watch would have been purchased yeah. as a replacement to that. You never saw the Angelus chronograph, did you? Uh, so I, I think the gentleman who initially had purchased this did buy it. He sold it separately. Um, okay. but was, what was remarkable is when I, when I did, uh, speak with his, his nephew and, and, and return copies of these documents back to him, um, he, he knew that this watch existed, that George had purchased it for his grandfather and then, uh, spent, you know, the better part of a weekend trying to find where, where it had gone. He sent me pictures and it was the exact same watch that was, uh, that was purchased and it was purchased in, um, in, in Europe while, while George was doing whatever he was doing at the oh, time. So the Angelus is where, where is that residing now? Who's got that? So the Angelus, uh, that was, that belonged to George. Um, I, I do not know where that had gone. Uh, okay. it was likely sold. Um, the Angelus that George had purchased for his father, which was a matching watch, uh, still resides with the, um, with the nephew. Got you. Got you. Got you. I see. Um, so tell me this, um, with this, this um this story in that there um 
what do you what do you hope will happen to the watch what's your what's your your result besides it selling for a substantial sum what's what's your what's your hope with this auction uh, I, I mean, my, my hope for this auction, it's, it's been uh, a remarkable honor, honor to, to really be able to tell this gentleman's story. Um, again, uh, he had a last surviving nephew that had no idea who this, this gentleman was. Uh, through my research, I was able to track him down and return these, uh, these, these documents back to his family. He was brought to tears when I initially had reached out, had no idea that these, these articles existed. Um, and, and I think to your point, you know, washes are such an important um, uh, item for, for, for a man. And I think this really starts to, uh, highlight the importance of them. And, uh, really it's, it's, it's going to bring a lot of other people, um, uh, into the fold as, as we're you know, talking about a piece like this. And I, I think it's going to perform very well. We've gotten a lot of great interest thus far. We've gotten press coverage on Hodinkee. Um, but you know, ultimately being able to tell this man's man's story, uh, and make sure that, um, you know, his legacy is not forgotten has has been, uh, you know, a top priority for me. Um, and, and I think it's going to bring a lot of, uh, of interest into watches, specifically uh, pieces like this um, in years to come. Yeah, and no, I, I think it's definitely an amazing story. And uh, I think it's certainly well worth... Um, it's a very difficult thing, you know. I, I mean, look, if you were super rich, you, you would like to give it to a, a museum, but I dare say they probably wouldn't respect it yeah, I mean, unless it was expensive. Ab in, 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 you know what I mean? No, ab absolutely. And, and, uh, and this is, I mean, this, this is a watch that I think is going to test that market um, and it, it will perform uh, really well because of the story. I mean, it's so much more than a watch. It's, it's truly an American treasure. Um, and, and being able to get this piece, uh, you know, uh, some attention. I, I also feel that if this does go to a private collection, it's likely going to return uh, back to market at some point in time. And if you look at, you know, um, yeah. watches historically that go to auction, you know, now we've had a chance to market this piece. People are going to be familiar with it. And if it comes back to market again, People will have a baseline for value. There will be there there will just be more press and attention that's brought behind a piece like this, and I expect it will sell for you know substantially more if it ever comes to auction uh, again. Yeah, yeah. No, look, I I think it's an amazing an amazing piece. A very tragic story because he was in his prime. I mean, uh, a lieutenant colonel. I mean, 1970 lieutenant colonel the next 20 years would have been his oyster the world would have been his oyster really you know he he absolutely he would have, he would have um um i i can't see him just he, he would have achieved so much and i i i kind of it's very sad that he his daughters didn't marry he, just a very very tragic just shows you how nasty war can be and absolutely. um it's um it's 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 a it's a very much a tragedy there um look i i want to say thanks for for sharing that that story with us and uh i i wish you well i mean i i was i was a little bit i gotta be honest with you when i first heard the story i, I was a little bit i thought oh why are you selling it this is a bit nasty but then i thought to myself how would i if you had something that's amazing how would you get that into a museum if you give it to somebody or i mean i mean it's very hard to do that in this world we live in but i don't think they'd respect it unless it sells for big money they don't place any value on it i mean i think this yeah. is an amazing piece and uh you know i i i i would like to say to um lieutenant C colonel lieutenant colonel um finter, finter that George Finter, that um, hey, hey man, we 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 love your piece, we love your style. We hope you're looking down, saying, "Yeah, that was my watch." I hope I hope he's in a happy place. I hope he's in a retired battlefield up there, looking down, saying, "Hey, that is that's nice to know that they 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 cherish my piece." Um, I, I hope he can see the affection that. And I think that's something that should be conveyed, Tim. 
Yes. Even though you are selling it, you do love this piece. You really, you see yourself as a custodian. It's not just the money. The money, not at money, all. money can get very grubby. And I, I think this must be said here. You are a proud American. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, the Vietnam War was very controversial, but this was a, this made was the ultimate a, sacrifice. Um, exactly. And to, and to your point, this, this watch could have been completely forgotten about if it was purely donated to a museum. It might have been exactly. stored away in, in, in some sort of file cabinet. And probably pinched, probably pinched. That's what happens to a lot of museum stuff. You know, I'm, I'm really against uh, donating anything to museums because um, they have such slippage. I've got to tell you, I think what you're doing is the best way to get this item. It's recognition uh, and, and remember this gentleman's legacy. Exactly. And George, if you were looking to, at this in, this YouTube clip, because I know they've got YouTube in heaven as well as um, cable TV. Um, I just want to say, George, we love your we love your effort. Tragic tragedy that thirty nine you um you 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 left this earth, but uh, we love your watch. Great style. I mean, I mean, what you could just say to the man, George, you had good style, George, wouldn't you? I mean, certainly did. Lieutenant Colonel, cool watch. Don't, don't you think that's what you'd say to him, isn't it, Lieutenant that's Colonel? Cool choice, because everyone would have gone for the uh, the um, I mean, Speedmaster, wouldn't they? Because the moon landing and that there, what a cool choice. He went for the Seamaster. And, he, and I love the did. the three hundreds. They're they're um I think they were better than a five five one three or a sixty. I think they were cooler watches. Better than that. And uh, so so if George, if you are watching this YouTube clip, cool cool watch, George, cool watch. And um, uh, if Tricky Dicky's watching here, you should have fucking got out earlier, you stupid <laughs> shit. If that's if Tricky Dicky is uh, watching this clip. Why the fuck didn't you get out? You said you were going to pull out. Anyhow, that's how it goes. So thank you very much. That concludes yeah. this interview. And thank you, uh, good, good luck. Just stay on the line. I'm just going to end it and I'll come and chat to you. Ending it now.